Welcome back to another Mobile Centrix Tips and Tricks. My name is Derek, and today I'm going to be showing you a repair on an iPad. This iPad isn't charging and has a typical TriStar failure. In this video, I'm going to be going over the things that I do to solve this issue. Let's get into the video. Here I have an iPad 7, and it's in pretty good condition. The only issue is it doesn't charge. When I plug it in, we get no draw from power. So a quick test that we can do is try using our TriStar tester here. Let me go and turn it on. We'll plug it in, and immediately I get this exclamation point, which tells me that we're probably going to have an issue with TriStar. But let's go ahead and run a quick test anyway. So we so it tests the charge port as OK. Now it's running the test on the TriStar and we get fail. All right, so if we check more, we can see that it fails on everything except for the main 5-volt rail, which means we've got a TriStar failure. Replacing that should be the solution. Now, the component itself is really small. Now, out of this 10-pack, I'm down to just two left. But that right there, this is the component that's failed that has caused the issue with the iPad. As you can see, it does come pre-balled, and if you want to take the time to re-ball it with a lower melting solder, that's totally acceptable. Or you can install it with the factory solder. If this is a repair that you do frequently, let me know in the comments below. Do you prefer re-balling your new TriStars? Three, two, one. Now this repair can technically be done inside the frame, but there's a lot of risk involved in that. So taking the extra time to separate the, the board from the frame, in my opinion, is the better way. Take some isopropyl alcohol, flood the base with it and this thing's been warming up for quite some time so this board should come up nice and easily i'm just going to put a teeny bit of tension under the board and let the alcohol and heat do its thing and the whole board will will just pop right out and there it goes barely any tension i'm basically letting the weight of the tweezers do the job we'll slowly lift add some more isopropyl alcohol and the board should then just pop free. And there it goes. So we can run the test on it one more time with it out here. And you'll see when we plug it in. Device connected. Quick test. Port's okay. And fail for the TriStar. We'll get under it and slide across. There, pop it loose. And it pops away. Now this next part is kind of annoying because the IC that we need to get at is right there. And it is under this section of the frame. There's a couple ways we could go about it. We could desolder this section of the frame with a heat gun, or we could simply snip out this section, which is what I prefer to do. So I'm just gonna cut out the frame. When this goes back on, it'll cover up the missing frame so you won't be able to tell, but uh, it's just the easiest way to get at TriStar. Now I'm gonna take a razor blade. And I'm just gonna score the metal where I want to have it kind of tear away. Almost like I'm sawing through it a little bit there. And let's go like right here. And if I can, I'm gonna leave the border. Sometimes it tears off anyway. But I'm just gonna scrape down like that. And we'll go do the same thing, go in this direction. Now we'll grab our wire cutters here. I knocked off this little cap on accident. I'll have to take a look at him. All 
Normally it goes a little smoother than that. This cap, I kind of messed it, messed it up a little bit. But it might be okay. We just need to see if it solders back on. And just testing this guy, we've got a ground on this side. Yep, we get ground and I get the reading that I should on this side. So I'm just gonna leave that cap, so it should be fine. All right, I'm gonna take some hot air and we're gonna get this uh, TriStar off of here. Just like that. Add some flux. I'm going to add some 138 solder paste. Just a little bit. Come in with the soldering iron. We're going to mix up uh, the factory solder that's on the board with the 138. This will make it so that we can wick it a lot easier. Begin with a little bit more 138. Really breaking up all of the, the solder that's on there that's uh, still kind of at a higher temperature. We'll add some more flux. Now we'll take our wick. I've got 1.5 millimeter goot wick. Just like that. You can see how in one quick pass I was able to get rid of all of the solder. If you don't use the 138, it'll take you a lot longer. Now with the microfiber cloth, some isopropyl alcohol, and a brush, I'm gonna go in there and try to pick up all of the, the flux. We got a little bit left. All right, now that uh, that's clean, I'm gonna add a teeny bit of flux. Nothing crazy. Just gonna coat all of the pads. Not only will the flux help the solder want to attach to the pads, but it also prevent the pads from oxidizing under the heat. We'll get our new TriStar. We'll line it up. I didn't mention this before, but you gotta know where the, the dot is, and it was here in the top right. We'll line that up. If you're finding this video useful, Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, we'll come in nice and slowly. And wait for it to settle and snap into place. Add a little bit of flux. There we go, snapped into place. Now I'm gonna come in with some isopropyl alcohol. Now that it's cooled down a bit, and we're gonna clean off all of the flux. And something to keep in mind, you've got a plastic connector right here, you don't wanna melt. I forgot to mention you want your airflow to always be directed away from, from it so it doesn't melt it. There you can see the uh, you can see the solder making nice pancakes joints between the, the IC and the and the board there. Now that we've got that IC swapped, let's go ahead and take our tester here, plug it in. Device connected, and look, we don't have the exclamation point anymore. So we'll hit quick test. Okay for the port. And try start pass. So now you can see everything passes. So we should be good. Let's take our shield, stick it back on. You see what I mean by you can't even tell? It covers up the little piece of metal we pulled off. Now we'll just set this gently back inside. Now that we have everything connected, I'm gonna pull out the battery protector, put back the battery screw, gently let the display back down, 
And now let's plug it in. And there we go, charging. And we are pulling right around where it should be. Let's see when I click the power button, boom, it comes on. Yeah, now we're good to close this, close this guy back up. I was able to get the, the digitizer off without messing up the uh, original adhesive. Leave it the way it is. And the last step is just giving it nice, getting rid of any of the little dust stuff that might have gotten on there. You can see the adhesive is pretty much still as good as you'd get with an aftermarket Tessa tape. And when I click the home button, we also get that so I know the home button's connected. So now we can just push the digitizer till it lines back up and it goes into the frame. Give it a nice good squeeze all around and we'll let this charge up and we'll test it out. Uh, we are done, pretty much done. Now, of course, the way that I've done this is just the way that I do it. There are little intricacies, little things that I might do differently than, than others. Leave it, leave comments down below. What would you have done differently? And we'll continue that conversation down there. All right, so it's finally come on. You can see we're charging there on the top. If I unplug it, then plug it back in. You can see it's charging. So, yep, all fixed and good to go. So there you go, all fixed, charging once again. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything you'd like to see in an upcoming video. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.